Well, obviously, you know, with the, the tight end situation, the, the 11 personnel presented more of a, a factor for us and uh, as well as some of the 10 personnel stuff. So we're always going to try to utilize, you know, whoever's up for us on game day and as, as much as possible and, and maximize our personnel to create matchups. And I think that's, that's, that's what you always try to do. Um, you know, because you've got four wide receivers up, you want to be smart with how you're using them. If you've got five wide receivers up and two tight ends up, then, you know, you want to be smart with how you're using those guys and, and maximize what you've got on game day to, to utilize your personnel as, as best you can. Um, so I think that's, that's the big thing. Sorry. I think it was five receivers and six, but uh, I'm not sure if those numbers were right. <laughs> I want to make sure I'm good there. Uh, but uh, you know, again, I think maximizing, you know, what you've got up available to you on game day is important to utilize your personnel to create matchups is, is huge because we've had good success with both. Uh, but we don't want to be locked into any one thing in terms of that, you know, and, and let a let a coordinator kind of pin his ears back because he knows we'll only be in one thing or another thing. You've got to be able to to attack a defense in multiple ways and, and use your personnel to create those matchups. Mm -hmm. Hey Ken, um, I was curious. Just getting off started with that with that quick pace and on the first drive, I guess. How encouraging was that to you with the way the offense started yesterday? And how do you think that? Do you think it was like building off that helped a lot? Like, I guess how important was that first drive yesterday? I know it ended in a field goal, but still, like the momentum that came from that. No, I think you know uh, the guys did a great job. Obviously, you had a plan coming out um, to start a game. Um, but I think their their mental, you know, the mental uh, kind of toughness of our group that's shown up the past few weeks, um, you know, it really showed yesterday as well to start the game because you have a plan saying, OK, hey, to start the game, we want to do this. And we, but now all of a sudden you're backed up and you have know, plan changes. And I thought the guys handled it really well. Um, you know, that's not something that uh, obviously, you know, uh, um, was anticipated uh, going in, but you have a plan for it if it happens. And I thought guys really adjusted and, and did a great job with that. And uh, and we were able to kind of get in a rhythm there early. And that, that uh, obviously, I think, set the tone for the game for us. Um, at the same time, I think our guys are, are resilient. I think our guys do a really good job in, in handling, you know, different situations. So no matter what the situation, fast start, a, uh, you know, uh, not, you know, we don't score there, whatever it is, our guys mentally uh, do a good job handling what those different situations can be. Josh ran it on the second play. And then obviously there were a few more runs throughout the game. Sean talked about last night, how like he's not talking to him anymore about sliding. It's something he, Josh knows how to do at this point, I guess for you going forward, we've talked so much about, you know, balancing that Josh running the ball and keeping him healthy and all that do you feel like last night was a good example of how it can be kind of a productive part of the offense? And are you also done talking to him about sliding? Like, do you feel like he's got that pretty much down at this point? Yeah. I mean, at the end of the day, um, you know, I'm a big believer that, Hey, Josh is a unique football player and, you know, he's, he's um, extremely obviously talented as a passer um, and, it, but explosive as a runner. So I, I just feel like, you know, uh, to to be able to let him go ahead and, and utilize those traits is is great for us. Um, while at the same time, you know, he knows, hey, I I, I want to be smart with my body and make sure I'm I'm doing the right things and making the right decisions for myself and for my teammates. So I thought he's he did a great job of that last night. Um, I trust him implicitly, whether it's throwing the ball or running the ball and making decisions or checks at the line if he sees something, getting into something else. Uh, I got a lot of faith in Josh and a lot of trust in him. And uh, he's done a great job in making these adjustments. And as he, you know, grows, um, you know, in this league and, and gets older and everything, those those uh, decisions for his body are going to become more and more important. I think he he understands that and uh, he knows it's for what's best for him and the team. And then there's going to be times to go for it, you know, and where you've got to, you know, do those things where you got to give up your body or, and go for it, you know, and it's just understanding when those situations are and when he has to do it. And then I was curious, his, obviously he got his shoulder looked at during the game and then wasn't, didn't miss a play, but as a play caller, are you altering anything at all knowing that, you know, his shoulders may be bothering him a little bit? Did it impact you at all as a play caller? 
Um, obviously, you know, there's, there's things that get taken off the table, um, you know, when, when you want to make sure you're not putting them at risk on certain things, you know, um, but at the same time, uh, that communication with him is critical, uh, I think, and, and him being extremely honest about, Hey, you know, I like this, Hey, not comfortable with this, um, all those things. But at the same time, but we feel, we feel really good with, uh, uh, where he's at and, uh, we'll continue to, to make sure we're doing the right things in, in terms of uh, how we're attacking defenses based off of that. And then last one for me, I was curious, Cole Shakir had a really big game last night. He's someone who's getting more and more involved. Just what do you think he's doing well? And yeah. And yeah, that, yeah. What do you think he's doing well? No, I think uh, obviously he's doing a, a really good job for us. Uh, he's a, a player that's got a lot of flexibility, um, you know, whether it's inside and then he's made a lot of plays for us outside as well. So He's smart. He's tough. He's dependable. Um, and I think those are all, all, you know, those three traits are really what you're looking for or what we're looking for as uh, offensive players in the system. So he embodies that, does a great job for us. And, and um, you know, he's he's got good feel in the slot, really good route runner. Uh, he's got uh, quickness, to get the ability to get in out of cuts and, and obviously some speed to, to make some explosive plays. So, I thought the rack was huge for us uh, last night and, and how Khalil uh, kind of started off the game with, with uh, really kind of two, you know, his first two catches were, were big rack plays for us. And I think that, that set the tone for the rest of the group. Thanks, Ken. Mm-hmm. Hey, Ken. Um with uh, the no huddle stuff, even even on the the plays where maybe you didn't huddle but didn't take a didn't weren't weren't in a hurry to take a snap, um, some of the guys talked about how that kind of kept um, Tampa from from getting into some of their multiple fronts and multiple looks. How how did that you know just just not huddling kind of limit what they were able to do um, just in terms of their their depth of the playbook? No, I think that's a great question. I think. Uh... Obviously, you know, as an as offensive guy, I'm not sure if how, how much, you know, it did or didn't. You know, you'd like to think uh, hopefully it, it uh, you know, put some, some question in their mind of, okay, well, are they going to go up to the ball right now and snap it? Are they going to, uh, you know, are they going to uh, be a little bit slower tempo? So mixing up those tempos are important, I think, um, you know, and, and you'd like to think that at the end of the day, you know, they've got to defend – uh, us getting, getting up on the ball and, and snapping it quick. So, um, you know, hopefully it, it did uh, kind of, uh, you know, put some doubt in their mind of, hey, can we do do some certain things or not do some certain, certain things? But at the same time, um, they've got a really good defense over there. They've got a really good scheme. And uh, I think they were able to get into some exotic looks, uh, even when we were kind of doing those uh, – you know, sugar huddle type things and, and no huddle type things. And when they were, I thought our guys up front did a really good job of, of handling those looks um, and, and uh, in protection and, and whether it was picking things up or, or uh, adjusting protection. So I thought just overall execution was, was uh, critical for us. When you're mixing in some of the sugar huddle stuff or just kind of taking your time at the line of scrimmage, does that make some of the no huddle stuff a little more sustainable over a longer period of time than maybe just, you know, going fast, fast, fast. Oh uh, yeah. I think anytime you can adjust the tempo and mix the tempo up and keep that doubt in a, in a opposing play caller's mind is important. You know, the more uh, you can, you can do those types of things to where, you know, that opposing play caller can't get comfortable saying, okay, I know what they're doing every time. I know they're going to be on the ball going fast, or I know that they're going to be, you know, on the ball with, uh, uh, you know, taking their time on the ball or, you know, huddling, not, huddling. you know, I mean, I think the more that you can put that uncertainty of terms of what we're going to do into a opposing play caller's mind, uh, I think that that helps you. So, um, you know, I think that that was that was big for us last night. And, and obviously uh, with a guy with a lot of experience in this league who's been, you know, very good in this league for a long time, you know, try to keep him off balance as much as you can, which is tough for, for guys like that with such experience. And then lastly, um, how much do you think it, it helps a player, especially a, a younger player, to be able to kind of stay on the field rather than be, you know, being subbed in and out, you know, like a guy like Khalil or Dalton who are coming from, 
you know, situations where they used to play all the time, you know, and now maybe they're in and out, but last night they were kind of, you know, steadily in the game for most of the time. Yeah. I mean, I think there's, um, you know, you get, yeah, you get a little rhythm of the game, but I think at the same time, I think our guys have done a really good job, you know, whether we have been mixing up personnel groups in the past or, or however we're, we're mixing things up that, They've done a good job, whether we are just, uh, changing personnel or or we have been going on the ball and, and keeping the same personnel grouping. So um, obviously, I think, uh, uh, you know, they, they got in a rhythm last night, but I thought that was just more of a, a product of the whole group and just our overall execution more so than anything. All right. Thank you. Mm hmm. Hi, Ken. It's Jay with the Buffalo News. You touched earlier on the yards after catch. Um, if you could maybe just expand on that a little bit, both what you saw in that category last night and then maybe uh, for the season as, as a whole, uh, are you seeing some improvements in that area of, of the game? Yeah, definitely. I think it's one, it starts with the mindset of, you know, wanting to do it, of, of you know, putting that just in, in the forefront of your mind of securing the ball and, and getting north and south. Um, and it starts obviously with, you know, uh, Josh making good decisions and, and having the ball in the right spot with good ball location. And then our guys getting North and South and, and hey, at times making somebody miss or, or knifing and, and getting some of those hidden yards, you know, just some of those, some of those things go unnoticed, you know, of, of, Hey, it's second and eight and a guy, you know, catches the ball at, at three or four yards and gets North and South and either gets a first down or gets us some you know, there's a big difference between like third and two and third and four and five, you know, so, uh, or third and one and third and four. So some of those hidden yards are, are really important in that as well. Um, so I think the more, the more you emphasize rack and the more that guys kind of embody that, I, uh, I think it's contagious. And I think you saw that through a lot of guys last night, whether it was Khalil, Dalton, Steph, Gabe, um, you know, all these guys were able to make some plays uh, you know, through that, that rack mindset. And I think that's, that's huge for an offense because when you start getting that um, you could create explosive plays uh, without having to, you know, throw the ball downfield a ton uh, as well. So, um, you know, we want to be able to attack all levels of the field, whether it's short, intermediate, deep, but to be able to create explosives while still attacking all those levels of the field is huge for an offense. Thanks, Tim. Mm-hmm. Yes, good afternoon, uh, Coach Dorsey. George Radney, Challenger Community News. Good afternoon to you. How are we doing? Great, great. Sunshine, 70 degrees, can't beat it for this time of year in upstate New York. No doubt. My, yes, indeed. First question, is uh, Deontay Hardy, Hardy, and especially what he's been doing on the on the punt returns last night, and also uh, James Cook, is, well, get, how about, is it possible to get these guys in space? Because these guys look like if you get them in space, they could they could take it to the house at any time, uh, especially punts, draw plays, screens, things of that nature. Is that in, in, in consideration, Coach? Well, I think we always are trying to get all of our guys in space. we got a lot of guys who can make plays for us, and, and we want to focus on you know, going out. And, uh, again, what we try to do is, hey, put our guys in position so that they can make plays. And, and I think those guys – uh, you know, are, are important to us uh, as well. So, you know, I think all of our guys, we make that focus of, hey, let's try to get our guys in space so they can make plays for us. Especially your speed guys, because those guys are the, are the most dangerous. And my last question, uh, at the goal line, you, you, you went to a uh, spread offense at the one yard line. Uh, I was wondering why you didn't have Gilliam in or why not a power formation, high formation, some type of power move, especially with the Tampa Bay having beat out their big nose guard, didn't play in the game last night. I was wondering uh, why why you didn't choose to go to a power move at that point in the game. Yeah, we were going tempo there and try to, um, you know, get one in there. Uh, so obviously it didn't work out. It's something we'll evaluate and look at and make sure uh, we're doing the right things moving forward. All right. Thanks for your time. Good luck next week. Thank you. I can. Um, I noticed last night, Dion, you know, not that he doesn't do this quite often, but I think last night maybe a little bit more moving from left to right, pulling all the way across the line, open up some cutback lanes. Can you just kind of go into what it takes for an offensive tackle, left tackle to be able to do that? 
Yeah, no, I mean, he's uh, he's such an amazing athlete. And, and the things that, that we ask him uh, to do, um, you know, not a lot of linemen, you know, in this league at times can do. You know, I mean, it's 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 really impressive in terms of what he can do from an athletic standpoint uh, and then a physicality standpoint when he gets there, you know. So, uh, obviously, he does a great job for us in, in some of those different schemes and some of those different things that we ask him to do. And then, uh, you know, the, the good part about what, what we do is it, it doesn't hamstring us that it just has to be Dion because you got Spence on the other side who's an athletic guy who could do a lot, of the, a lot of those things as well. So, um, you know, Dion, Dion does a lot for us. Uh, you know, he's, so, he's been so dependable for us, uh, works incredibly hard, and, and has put himself in position to really, really help this team in, in a multitude of ways, whether it's pass protection or like you're talking about in, in the run game on, on some of those things that, uh, you know, he does a great job doing. We know, you know, Dalton has hands and we've seen him be able to play as, you know, a, a player who can catch the ball, obviously, the way he can. But what is the challenge of a young player with Josh, who's so mobile, can go out of structure, staying with it, understanding where to be, like the play where he scored the touchdown, mm -hmm. the awareness. I mean, you got to you got to get reps, I would think, in those types of situations. And you don't get reps until, you know, you, you have enough under your belt. I mean, uh, uh, he's a extremely instinctual player, Dalton does. He's got a great feel for the game. Uh, you know, again, like Kyle was talking about earlier, you look for guys on offense in this system, you know, since uh, since I've been here, who are smart, tough, and dependable. And I think Dalton is, is again, a guy who fits all three of those things because you talk about, yes, those, those catches and everything that are huge, but when you look at him in the run game uh, as a blocker, he's been – you know, battling, uh, you know, doing a, a lot of good things for us in the run game as well as a blocker. So when you look at him as, as a as a complete tight end, he's doing a lot of things in that fashion. Now, you know, to go back to the pass game stuff, just he's got a great feel for the game, uh, an extensional player for, for coverage, for how to run routes. And then, like, some of those catches he made, I don't think people realize, like, they're not always the easiest catches, but he just makes them look, look that way. So – um, as a as a as a young player in this league, he's doing a lot of great things, and he'll continue to grow and, and become better and better. And I think uh, uh, really excited about the direction that that uh, that he's taking within this offense. And finally, sorry for a third question, but can you take us into the what we call the mini buy? I guess do you do a little more self scouting over the weekend. Do you have a little extra time? What does it look like to have the extra few days for you? Yeah, no, I, I think you definitely go back and you look at all right the the you know, first kind of chunk of season here and evaluate, okay, what, what have we been doing? Where are the areas of improvement? You know, what do we need some reps on in practice? Uh, whether it's concept wise, whether it's specific route wise. Um, yeah. And you, you evaluate those things and you, you uh, try to make sure to have a plan kind of going into next week of, all right, here's the, here's what we want to do next week. But then within that, all right, we need to work on these things in, in terms of stuff that uh, we can improve on. Or, hey, let's just stay away from these things because they haven't been as productive for us. So I think there, there's definitely a, a, you know, a piece to that where you want to make sure to, to utilize this time to kind of help you into next week. Thanks for your time, Coach. Mm -hmm. Thank you.